In the shop today is a 2017 Mercedes E-Class. Beautiful car, old digital dashboard. Really nice car. It came into the shop after the body shop had replaced the front headlight. The original headlight got busted in the accident. Water got into it. Mercedes puts all their modules on the bottom of the headlight. So of course all the water accumulates and destroys the modules so they can sell more parts and it destroys the connector. After replacing this $2,500 headlight, you have to buy the module separate. So we got the module, plugged it all in. This vehicle got so destroyed that the connector got corroded as well. So I didn't want to take any chances with this corroded connector. So I ordered a brand new replacement connector and soldered and heat shrunk all the wires back in place. Now that all that is done and I plug it in and nothing, nothing lights up on the right side of the vehicle. Not the headlight, not the low beam, not the LED lights, nothing. So I'm going to plug in a charger. And I'm going to set up my diagnostic session and log into Mercedes and check out this car and see what is going on with this one. Is it just a coating? It doesn't have blown fuse. Did it short anything out when all that water accumulated? Did it fry any other modules in the vehicle? I really, there's no way to know. Once a car has been through a body shop collision and damage, there's just no telling what I'm going to face. Let me turn the key on, shut off the AC and all consuming devices. Oh, and the cat wants to check it out too. And let me see what is going on. This is the latest Mercedes VCI interface. They got away from that huge multiplexer. This is the Panasonic tablet that they're using. Um, of course, everything is live online and it has you have to log in with your dealer code and password to even communicate with the vehicle. Now we're going to go ahead and start this session. Uh, the cat is not happy with this and can't find a comfortable spot where to sit. Not sure where is the proper place. Oh, it looks like that's it. All right, now that she's happy, we can continue with this job. The left headlight is original and the lights up. The right headlight is dead, nothing coming out of it. Before I go checking any further, I'm just going to take a voltmeter since this connector only has five wires going into it. So it's easy for me to just take a voltmeter, check the basic power grounds and ignition and the data lines to see if everything coming up to this vehicle is correct before I go checking fuses and tracking anything else down. So the two fat wires are my positive and my ground, and I have 13.55, which I know is good. Now I have the ignition circuit, so I'm going to leave my ground in place and check my red and yellow wire, which is ignition on, and I got, and now I'm going to go ahead and check the data line. There's two data lines coming in. Each one has 2.7 volt, which is correct. And I always like to check the two data lines against each other, positive and negative, to make sure they're not shorted together. So this one shows three point something volts. So I know at least they're not shorted together. So now I've just determined in less than five minutes, my data lines are good. My ignition circuit is good. My power ground circuits are good. So if the new headlight with the new module is not lighting up, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a coding or programming issue. So let me go in and read all the codes. So this car has 51 independent modules that are communicating on some of the many data lines on this vehicle. I'm not really interested. Most of them are uh, past codes. So I'm going to scroll down. These one are stored codes. And here we are. This is the headlight module that I'm looking for. I'm going to go find the left and write all of these other modules are fine some of them are showing an indicator but here we are left headlight has a stored code so i'm not concerned about that 
I'm going to go now to the right headlight, and it has a current and stored, and here we are. Component not configured. That's fine, because we're going to go on, and we're going to program this new module, and that should resolve the issue with this headlight. The body shop has no choice. They're repairing the front of this vehicle. They installed all this headlight with all the components. They're almost into over $3,000 on just the headlight. And here we are. The component to, to program it, the initials, it tells me right here that I'm going to need this special scanner in order to complete the job. And we're going to go online and we're going to ring up to the server in Germany to retrieve all of the files and coding and programming and SCM coding that's going to go into this new headlight and to the new module. This is quite a process. This is not anywhere near a plug in and play. There is so much coding and programming that it's absolutely ridiculous. The first thing it's going to do, it's going to check the software. And as you can see over here, it decided that the brand new module that they just put in has an updated software. So the first thing before it's going to code it or program it or initialize it, it's going to program it. And now it looks at the condition of the vehicle. It doesn't like that the wiper switch is left on automatic wiper or on the rain sensor. A lot of people leave it on the rain position, automatic wipers, because it only comes on when it rains. But they want it off because when it programs the vehicle, it puts all the other modules to sleep in a coma-like state. And it doesn't want the wipers to continue going on and off while you're programming it. Once you satisfy, satisfy that condition, you can go further, and now it's going to analyze the rest of it, and it's going to start the programming process. I cut this video just to shorten it. It takes five minutes to program each headlight. It also, as you look at the right side of the screen, it has to match the software with the left original headlight. So it's going to program the right headlight and the left headlight, making sure they have the latest software. I don't know what software the engineers have decided to come up with. It is a headlight. It's an LED light that lights up the road at night. How much software goes into it? Absolutely ridiculous. But there we are. Once it completes that, it's going to go into the coding, the left and the right. And then it's going to go into the teaching of the right headlight. The teaching on the left headlight is not necessary since the power supply is already matched to the LED headlight. But on the right side, they just put in a brand new headlight. So all of the LEDs, yes, all, there are like five or six or eight, ten channels, depending on the type of headlight. This is actually not the most expensive one. They have another headlight that's called a matrix, and that's far comp more complex than this one. So I shorten the video as much as I can. I try to keep my videos as 10 minutes. This is obviously just an overall of what goes into programming a headlight when you take your car to the dealership and you get a really big bill. This is what they are doing. It's still programming. It's still downloading. I can't even try to read these words. Some of them are in German and they use a lot of letters. Look at this word. Don't even try to read that. And it just goes on and on and on. But the cool thing about it, at the end, when it does the teaching, it does something very interesting. It supplies the power to each and every strip of all the LEDs internally. And it matches the module power supply to the LED specific for that vehicle. And that training is important. Yes, you could put a headlight in, and you could put the original modules into that headlight, and you'll turn on the headlights and everything will work. However, if they're not matched to that specific LED headlight that you just installed for $2,500, it's going to burn it out because it's either going to overheat it, overpower it, or underpower it. And it's required to match the power supply with the LED. LED lights are not a bulb where you could just 
take a bulb out and put a new bulb in and you're ready to go. They are part of a circuit. They are reaction to light emitting diodes. They're not a bulb. So the power supply has to be matched to the, to the LED light. This process is going on and on. Periodically, I'm walking to the front of the car to see if I get any reaction. After about a half hour of programming, everything on the right new headlight turned on and it's perfectly white and solid the way it's supposed to be. Now it's doing a calibration on the left headlight. Watch how it turns orangey and amber and how it goes into white. This is what it's doing when it's matching the power supply. Then it tunes it in to make it perfectly white and this makes the headlight last the 5,000 hours or whatever the light is rated for. Now both lights are on, everything is working. I'm going to go ahead and scan the vehicle, reset all the codes and rescan it. The process, what we're supposed to do is the LED bar coding. It's going to tell me if you replace the right headlight and the answer is yes, it's going to go through to this LED um, barcode reader that you have to read the headlight barcode. Each headlight is manufactured with a barcode on the headlight. And these barcodes, I'm not sure if it has something to do with the programming or this is something to do with a theft prevention that the headlight barcode gets logged in to the dealership and they can track these headlights if they were stolen or their original. I'm not really sure. But when you read that square little barcode, look how many numbers and letters comes out of it. And once it reads it out, you hit continue. And now it's going to go through some kind of learning process for this particular barcode. It tells you a um, nice color digital picture on your scan tool where the barcode is. And a lot of this particular vehicle, the barcodes are exposed. Some of the vehicles, once you install the headlights, you can't reach these barcodes. And you have to disassemble it. The one I showed you now is the old one from the trunk. Do not use the old one. Here we're going to say, so here is another successful programming. All the channels of the headlight got programmed. This headlight has up to six channels. These are the specified voltage that I put into each and every one LED. Now we have a $2,500 headlight, a $300 module, and a $35,000 scan tool to program it all. Thank you for watching Jack Short. Now the body shop can finish the repair and deliver the vehicle.